And this uh, actually creates our uint a arrays, right? So the pixel arrays, they're not null because they're defined right over here. Um, okay, yeah. Um, so ideally, right, if I have some type of global container with some type of global data, I want all of that in a initialized state when I initialize the container. Um, there's this thing called, uh, what is it, Ray? Resource acquisition is initialization. And, um, you know, so we want to try to kind of adhere to that kind of a thing, right? And so we ask for a container, right? And this container has this thing called a pixel array. So by the time we ask for it and get it back from a function call, this should not be null, right? Um, now, I'm not obviously doing a strict array, but it's good to, like, you know, keep that principle in mind when you're doing stuff. Uh, okay, so that looks pretty good. I feel like I've probably broken stuff because I've broken these identifiers. Um, so rather than run the code, I'm just going to look for where I'm pretty sure I broke it. Um, am I matching the whole word? Okay, so right here, um, that's no good, right? We want to call that uh, isomem.texthand, like that. Um, and then all of these, right? Um, but now we don't have to use this for the data array. What we can do is uh, um, instead of having these entries like this, what we can do is we can do the global data dot uh, isomem and yeah and that because this isomem has all of these things in here right these were anonymous objects with no name now the name of the object is isomem and that's going to represent this thing and you know if you really want to you could for reference you know since if we don't really want to delete our code right you could just um keep that around for reference you know um to say this is kind of what that what used to be um and then you know you could do the same thing here or you could comment that out and kind of keep that for reference as well so global data dot uh, master memory and that'll kind of make it that's a little bit more verbose right but it uh if we ever find some of these variables running around and we're like what the hell we can kind of see a trace of like how the code evolved um Okay, so that should, so now this data array should just uh, work um, because it'll, it has the, um, it still has all these entries, but now they've been put into these more formalized objects. So now we don't have to worry about making any mistakes of transcribing this wrong. Because if you saw in a previous tutorial, right, I swapped the texture handle and texture slot, so I assigned this to that, and then I assigned this to that, and it, and I didn't notice it. Um, and I had to bug. So um, now we don't have to worry about that transcription problem because we're not juggling around the variables as much. Okay, so let's take a look at this and see if it's broken or not. Um, so refresh, and we broke something. So what did I break? Um, well, let's take a look at the debugger. Unexpected token. Um, so a syntax error. So I probably used like a colon when I needed it equals. Uh, and that's what it looks like. So I'm gonna go back into my code, and I'm pretty sure I know where that is. Was the ISO memory? Okay, so this right, I just directly ripped this out of the object where I was defining it, and now because of the way it's written, we need to change these um, colons to equal signs. And then also we should have, if we want to write this proper, right, there's semicolon injection, but, you know, I personally would feel much better if uh, we didn't rely on semicolon injection. And that looks a little bit better. Um, so we have these clusters for, you know, where it's 
Now, obviously, you might think this looks more ugly because before we, you know, if we just had it in, uh, right, because before we had these anonymous objects and we just had these identical properties defined, and now we have, like, a lot of redundancy here. We have, like, the, we have visual clutter here, and then we have visual clutter here, you know, as opposed to if we did it like this, like, uh, var iso mem equals, right? And then we did this, and then we just, like, uh, pasted these, right? So this is much, much cleaner looking, right? And then we just have, uh, like that, right? And then we just, uh, take these, and we do this, right? Something like this, um, something like this definitely looks a lot cleaner than something like this. This looks a lot dirtier, uh, but the, the, the reason I did, uh, it like this, like this, was so that I can, uh, formalize this reusable object type, whereas if I do it like this, um, it's not really, uh, formalizing the container type, right? And then, you know, you duplicate it like this, and you call this, like, main memory, and it's obvious that they have the same structure, but there's no formalization that these are supposed to be the same object type. Um, so that's just a personal, like, taste or preference thing. Um, you know, um, I've seen it done both ways, but it's just that, well, let's control Z for a second. There's a risk here if you write it this way, that uh, eventually somebody's gonna come along and be like, some other fucking property, right? And then, you know, blah, 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 right? And then this has the some other fucking property, and then this one doesn't, and then you have to do all these checks to be like, oh, well, if this object has this property, or if this object has this property, and all that, I don't wanna deal with that bullshit. Um, so I really hate, I absolutely hate in JavaScript code bases where you kind of have to like look at the data inside the object and kind of take a guess at what type of object that is supposed to be. Um, because that, uh, what I was talking about earlier about fractionating your code base um, and like fractionating your variables, you can like fractionate your types if you, if you, do, if you do this, right? This is right here, what just happened here is we fractured our types. We had this one type, we had this one type, an implicit type, we just put this in here and now we've fractionated our types. You know, if you want to be more positive about this, you could say, oh, no, we didn't fractionate our types, it's just, uh, when you add this, it just makes it one of these, but it's, uh, it's a derived class, right? You could, you could think of it like that if you want to be positive about it. I'm not going to be positive about it. It's fucking spaghetti code. <sighs> Um, okay, so we have that, and, uh, that's looking pretty good, um, so uh, we said we were gonna remove that once we got things working. Let's refresh, make sure everything's working before we delete that, so let's go up here, refresh. Okay, so we got our rectangle again. I am looking at the source right now, uh, the console, just to make sure there's no errors, looks good. And, uh, yeah, let's get rid of this, uh, this entry that was kind of obnoxious and was just there to cope with this, uh, semicolon. And we can make a note here. Isolated scratch pad memory. And this is, uh, master, a.k.a. main memory. Just a little note to know, you know, what those mean. And what else can we do here? If we really wanted to, um, so I said that, you know, when I'm doing, doing, um, things with paths, right? It's, uh, it's the, um, the terminal node is lowercase. Okay, so this still adheres to that, where the terminal, the terminal nodes are the lower cases. So that way, when you're 
so the idea is I'm still thinking of this as a constant. It's like a compound constant. And the, the non-constant is kind of like the things on the end. Um, so it's like, you know, the dot operator, it's like thinking of it as like a path, right? So a dot could think be thought of as like a forward slash and like a, an explorer bar. So I'm trying to think that these paths never change. And that, so they're constants, that's why I'm writing them in all capitals like this. And then the stuff that does change is the terminal part at the end. Uh, am I running a timer? Yeah, I am. Uh, okay, so that looks good. Let's make sure that still runs. Refreshing, still looks good. I'm going to look at the console really quick. Console, looks good. Okay, so that was kind of a detour. But now we have, we've imposed a lot more structure on this, which will make it a little bit easier to um, manage when we start trying to merge it with uh, the other other code. Uh, and what do we take from this, um, this, uh, right, like this is kind of spaghetti code here, because it's just like, um, like the texture handle should already be ready. Um, well, that sucks. Um, it's not, it's not perfect, but just because you can't make your code perfect doesn't mean you shouldn't aim at, uh, structuring your code well. Uh, because if you don't aim at structuring your code well, it's going to be even shittier. It's always going to be shittier than you want it to be. Um... But you want to keep your expectations as high as possible so that when you don't reach those expectations, um, it's still decent, right? So if you have low expectations, the product the product is always going to be lower than your expectations, which sounds really negative, but that's just the reality of the situation, right? And the positive takeaway from that is you want to have as high of expectations as, pos as possible. Just keep your expectations high, right? That's why I'm being so meticulous with these variable names and trying to be such a perfectionist because it's not going to be perfect. But I gotta try to make it perfect. Um, let's see, what else? Um, so we, we uh, create those textures and then um, we're gonna wrap the context. Um, so we kind of have what I would consider, um, if we have this adapter for the graphics, um, shouldn't a lot of that global stuff actually be in here and not in the, uh, global container? Um, but we don't want to fractionate our code, but, um, let's look up here again. Right, do we, like, want all of this stuff in, um, like, these hard-coded values? Uh, yeah, that is, right, so this would go into the, we could do that. Okay, I'm going to do a major restructure here. Well, not major, but I, I'm going to take back some of what I did here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is this adapter graphics. We're going to set this to null. And we will seal it when we create it. But then um, adapter graphics... Um, adapter graphics dot, uh, the context for the graphics equals the GL object. We'll put it right there at the end there. And then we're going to go up and we are going to put this all the way at the top, um, to kind of like stick with that pattern of kind of like declaring the object structure we are returning at the top. Um... Right. 
and maybe uh, use some type of different pattern to make it a little bit more noticeable. Okay. And my thought is, is that a lot of, let me refresh, make sure it's still running. My thought is a lot of that stuff that I think belongs in a global container is actually part of the uh, the adapter for the OpenGL state information, right? Because all this is very specific to the OpenGL state. So I feel like maybe my global data should not be this specific. I think what could specifically be in the global data is like these 512s and these 1024s. Um, so let's change that around. So global data, we're going to make, we're going to empty that out. Um, let's, <clears throat> um, so it's like basically this stuff here, right? So I'll take that and then in the global adapter stuff here, um, I know it, I know this stuff kind of like comes before. And then, uh, this is going to get messy. Um, so then this ISO mem and the main memory things, those are going to um, go into the adapter graphics. So we'll do something like uh, adapter graphics dot um, ISO Uh, well, now we got this um, mixed casing going on. Um, okay, well, let's not worry too much about that, uh, the mixed casing. Uh, equals, um, this is ISO mem. And then adapter graphics dot uh, the main memory. And then call, let me let you see that. Equals uh, the main memory, like that. And then some of this global data references, right? That's uh, no longer valid. That's um, because we're going to directly reference the ISO mem and the main memory. So we're going to get rid of this global data object. Like that, and then we're gonna isomem.pixel, okay, so we can literally do that. So, right, because we have them right here, this is where they're made, and we're just, then we're gonna load them into the um, container before we leave. Um, and there's no reference to this. So this adapter graphics that's up here, there's no reference to it um, until here. So we kind of have this fractionation where we have this over here, but then we're also populating this. Um, also, that's just not going to work. Um, it is nice to declare kind of the structure of what this thing is at the very top. Um, I don't really like having this part at the bottom, though. Like, I don't like this being split between two different places. Um, well, uh, after, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll think about it. Um, so, actually, we could do that. So, ISO, mem null, and then um, main memory, null, and then we also need like our commas right there. Okay, iso mem, main mem, then we can make these lower cases like this, like that. So now we can have a distinction between, you know, where the setup is and then um, where we're actually um, using it, um, object.seal, okay. And so then we have to remember that we got to return that object. 
Oh, wait, and uh, we're not returning it yet, are we? Okay.